Hello everybody. Welcome to Trinity Kids Grow for this week. I hope you've had a good week. I was thinking about um, how sometimes we have things that happen to us that make us happy and that it's a great day or things that happen to us um, that make us sad or angry or scared. And I was just wondering how your week has been. I hope it's been a good week. Um, but if it's if you've had something that was sad or that frustrated you or made you angry, that's okay too. Um, it's okay to have those feelings, um, but we don't want to stay that way all the time, right? So just know that whether you're happy or you've had a sad day, that that's okay. And you can just be that way and, um, and talk to people in your life about it. Or you could talk to God about it because he understands. Um, so today we're talking about sort of, remember we've, we've talked about Jesus's friends who were following him and they've gone up onto the mountain. And so we are in week three of looking at Jesus's sermon called the Beatitudes. And if you'll remember from the previous weeks, um, Jesus took his friends up to a mountain. Do you remember why? Because mountains are where we sometimes think about God being. We're closer to God in the mountains. It's a holy place. And in the Bible, we hear lots of stories um, of things happening on a mountaintop when people want to go to pray or they want to be closer to God. And so Jesus took his followers up to a mountain um, to sort of tell his story about what the kingdom of God is like. So we talked about the mountain. We talked about what it was like for people in Jesus's day and what the kingdom was like for them back then and that very few people had lots of power and money and they controlled everything and took the money and power from the other people. And so a lot of people were really poor and didn't have a lot. Um, and so they were, you know, maybe they were hungry. Maybe they didn't have a lot of clothing or a place to live. Um, and they really relied on the government, on the kingdom, to help them out. And a lot of times it didn't work that way. And that's what we call an oppressive system. So we've talked about that the last couple of weeks. So this week, we are talking about um, blessed are the poor. Wow. So I wonder what God has, what Jesus has to say to his followers about what that means. Because when we think about being blessed, that's just another word for being really happy and full of joy. And I don't know, I, when I think about people that are poor, that don't have a lot of possessions or a home, it's hard for me to imagine um, that they are happy or that they feel joy. So let's see what Jesus has to say about that. So remember, we're, we're learning our, um, we're hearing this message from the gospel of Matthew. And in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So when you hear the word poor, what do you think of? So like I said, we often think of people not having enough money to buy food or clothing or have a house. So Jesus saw how the wealthy people in charge in the government demanded lots of taxes from, from everybody that lived there. And so um, they used that tax money to build even bigger castles or provide themselves with fancier clothes um, and lavish possessions. But the people were already struggling to provide for their own families, much less give extra money to the king. And so if they could not pay their taxes, the government would take away what they did have. So they would take away what little they did own, their land or their cattle. And in turn, that took away their honor. So many people in Jesus's time who were poor like this um, weren't just poor in money and clothing and, and possessions, but they were poor in spirit which means they were really sad and worried that things might not get better. And so they felt trapped. And their biggest fear was that tomorrow would be just like today, 
and the next day, and it wouldn't get any better for them. They didn't feel blessed, right? So Jesus tells them in this story, in this Sermon on the Mountain, that blessed are the poor. What? So Jesus just turned their world upside down, and he says heaven and the kingdom of God belong to people who are poor in spirit, like they were. They are the blessed ones and the happy ones in the kingdom of God. So when it feels like the rich, the ones who seem to have it all and know it all, have all of the power, Jesus says that true honor and belonging and power in God's kingdom belong to the poor. So we can live this out now. So I want you to make a fist. We think of fist as a sign of fighting, right? Of power, of strength. But when our fists are closed, you can't receive anything new. How do you have to receive a present if somebody gives you a present? You have to open your hands, right? So Jesus' idea is that when we open our hands, this is a physical way to remind you that we depend on God and that we must be open to receiving and learning and growing and changing. So think about that, right? If you're going to be open to new ideas and to God's idea of what the kingdom is like, we have to be open to receive it. We can't be ready to fight and defend, right? We have to open our hands. So I want you to open your hands now and receive a blessing. Okay, so open those hands. You are blessed. Whether you feel happy or sad or angry or scared, you are blessed. All right. So we have um, a little activity today, and it's about our emotions. So do you know what emojis are? I'm sure you do, right? It's like happy face. I've drawn some here. So happy what do you think this one is? Angry. This one looks surprised, but it could be scared, right? Scared or surprised. Sad. And there's other emojis too, right? But these are the four main ones. Um, so we're going to do a little activity and you can draw these out and you can play this at home right so you could come up with your own ideas and see what people in your family um, would put emotion to that activity so here's some examples so let's see what we have here all right Taylor has a birthday party and most of the class is able to attend how do you think Taylor feels about that I bet she's happy, right? That her friends can come to her birthday party. All right, what about this one? Frankie almost scored a goal in his soccer game, but the goalie blocked it. Oh, well, I think there could be a couple of emotions that I would feel. I think if I were Frankie, at first, I might be sad that the goal didn't go in, right? But I could also be happy that I got so close, right? I made it so close, but that goalie did a really good job. So it could kind of go either way, right? Sort of depends on your attitude. I bet the goalie felt pretty good. Ooh, what about this one? There's an unexpected knock at the door. Hmm. Maybe surprised? Or would you be happy? Maybe? 
Maybe it's somebody, maybe it's your grandma coming over and you haven't seen her in a long time. What about Consuelo's kitty cat is sick? How do you think Consuelo feels about that? I would be sad. What about, how would your parents feel if they didn't know where you were? Let's say you decided to go on a bike ride, but you didn't tell anybody. How do you think your parents might feel? Well, I'm a mom, and I know that this has happened to me before. And at first, I'm kind of scared. I'm a little worried. And then, once I find my kids and I know they're safe, I might be a little angry. Why would I be angry? Because they didn't tell me where they were going. So you can play this game too. You can come up with different ideas and scenarios and, and see what people in your family feel about that. All right. So just remember that no matter what you're feeling, you are still blessed. And in God's kingdom, you are happy and blessed. So just because you might not have what everybody else has or think that you, um, you know, have everything, you don't have the latest game for your Nintendo, none of that matters in God's kingdom, right? What matters is that you are loved for exactly who you are and you are blessed. All right, I'm going to send you off in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we open our hands, we open our hearts, we open our minds to your loving spirit. Thank you for promising to fill us with what we need and to give us hope when situations feel stuck. We trust and depend on you. Amen. I hope you have a great week. Go on to the website. There's some other activities and some drawings that you can print off. And I will see you back here next week. Bye.